All right, everybody. Um, welcome to the stream tonight. Okay, um, Thursday night. Last last Tuesday on Tuesday we um, were able to clean up a few things, um, and then we were able to get kind of the index page in place. I want to take a couple look. I want to take a look at a couple of things um, specifically related to mobile um, because I didn't we didn't take a look at that Tuesday night. I just want to make sure that everything looks okay when we get to a mobile view. Um, we're in a good place there. Uh, we are looking at kind of the the Git branch going on right now, and there's um, there's this interesting. Updating Node.js to 2012.1. You know, what does that mean? So I run a tool in GitHub called uh, Renovate. Renovate's a really cool tool. It's a bot, and it just watches your repo, and as packages update, Renovate goes, hey, you might want to take a look at this package. It's updated. Um, it adds some really cool things. So like here, you know, it's telling me we need to update the analog mono repo. Um, so if I click on this, I can see that it's saying, hey, we need to change from 1.10 to 1.12. Um, it tells us how long, you know, this version has been released. Um, how many people, you know, the renovate scans have adopted it. And then, you know, how many of those people have passing tests and then, you know, what its confidence is in this update. Um, the other cool thing we can do is right here in the release notes, a lot of times I go looking notes, but you can see, you know, 1.11 adds some tan stack stuff for SSR um, and then some support for outputs and model signals, uh, Angular single file component. And then, you know, some fixes around uh, API routes and fetching and some custom base href server side data fetching. So there's a lot of good stuff here um, that we can see about our upgrades. I did this uh, before the stream, so it's already done. I just haven't merged it. And Renovate only runs on uh, the, the main branch. If I wanted to allow Renovate to do this, I mean, you can try rebasing the PR. Uh, there. There are other things you can do down here. You, I could go in and review it and then merge it. Um, I, I typically like to do it by hand because I like to do a bunch of things by hand. Um, and with the free version of GitHub I have, um, my pipelines don't run as fast. Um, and so, like if I were to, if I were to make this change, then I would have to wait for the pipeline to run. That can take a while. Um, and then, you know, I've got to wait for the rest of um, all of my renovate stuff to rebase and then run them. And it just, it gets slow. So um, with the free version, I find it easier to do a lot of these updates by hand. Um, but renovate is really awesome in that it gives me information about what I should be updating. Um, it will also tell me about bugs and you know any security issues that i've got in my packages which we don't have right now because we're staying up to date this last one though is the node upgrade so let's take a look at the angular cdk so here we can tell that only two percent of people have adopted this in the past day um 93 percent of the people that adopted it are passing got neutral confidence I like you know, this breakdown. Um, it, I don't use it so much for personal stuff because, um, or for stream stuff, because we're going to upgrade anyway, and if we break it, we'll fix it. Um, but if, you know, if you're doing this for like work or something like that, um, those kinds of things are really good to have. This, well, this is the types. To but here it's telling us to upgrade Node.js. And it's telling us it's a Volta upgrade and that it's minor. Um, and, and you know, what does that mean, right? A Volta upgrade and minor? 
Um, we can get some more information if we go to take a look at the commits and see what it wants to change for Volta. And what it wants to do is just change this node version that we've we've pinned in Volta. Um, and that would be okay. I would actually merge this right away. Um, but let's go let's go do it ourselves. To show you why I like to use Volta uh, like that. Um, so here we are at the command prompt, and if I do Volta list, uh, we can see that I'm running 2011.1 of Volta of Node, and that's coming from my package JSON. I also have Yarn installed, and that's my default Yarn. Uh, I've done a global install of Yarn, uh, not grabbing it from anywhere. Um, I've also got NCU installed, that's a default install, and then I've also got NPM, and that's also a default install. I don't have any of these things pinned. Um, but my node is pinned. Um, and so, like, if we were to go back a directory, and I was to do a Volta list here, um, we can see that my default version of node is actually 1819. And the nice thing about Volta is that as you... Um, Move around directories. So if we go to like, um, let's go to Angular um, Sudoku. And now if I do a Volta list, um, I didn't have to change anything. We're on 2011.0 um, and, and we're fine, right? Um, so the reason I like Volta a little bit more than like uh, something like NVM um, is that with NVM, you can do similar things, right? You can create an NVM RC file, um, but when you drop into this directory, you either have to, you usually have to do an NVM use, or you have to do um, some special things to your shell that whenever you change a directory, it checks to see if you have an NVM RC file and then it runs NVM. I, I'm, I'd much rather have this uh, for me. So um, going to that's why I like Volta. Um, so if if I look at Volta list here, um, right, we're pinned at 2011.1. Um, if I just do Volta pin and I do um, node at 20, I'm gonna get the most recent version of um, node and it's going to pin it. So we can see that Volta already um, determined that it was 2012.1. Um, it grabbed it. And now if I do my node-v, we can see I'm on 2012.1. And if I do my Volta list, um, we can see that I'm on 2012.1. And that's that's one of the things that I really like about Volta. I just told it, hey, pin it, and we're good to go. Um, and the nice thing is um, that you know it updated the file for me. Um, so it's on 2012.1, and if somebody um, somebody is, like checks out my repo um, and they have Volta installed um, and they don't have like 2012.1, as soon as they go into the directory, it'll grab it. They'll be on the same version of Node that I use to develop. It just removes um, potential. Um, just remove some potential issues. So um, that's why I like um, Renovate. That's why I like Volta. Uh, both great tools. Uh, you know, I, I haven't used FNM, which I think is the Rust version. Um, yeah. So. Um, NVM. FNM node here. Yeah, I haven't used FNM. I think FNM is built in Rust. It is. Get right there. This is the other one that I've been thinking about looking at. And so 
you know, it's got cross platform support because it's built in Rust. And it works with the .node version and NVMRC files. But it looks like you might have to use FNMUs whenever you go into directories again. Set up your shell for FNM. Setting up your shell for FNM. So environment variables. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, so it's so you can um, do a use on CD. Looks like it has the ability to do stuff like that. Um, So it looks like you can use the FNM ENV use on CD. Sounds good. Um, we may have to take a look. I don't know. I want to take a look at FNM. I like the use on CD. Uh, with NVM, you have to do a little bit to your bash shell. That's that's one that I also want to take a look at. Um, we upgraded node. I want to show. No. I didn't update web. Oh, it looks like um, the pre release is the release version. Um, that's good. I. I we can start using the release version of WebStorm. Really cool. So I'll update that later because um, I started the pre-release update. Um, it's no longer RC. It's the actual 2024.1 release. That's awesome. Um, one last thing. Let's see. PM NX. Serve our blog. And let's just make sure that everything looks good, that we can move around, um, and that we're in a good shape. And then we'll start building some stuff. So, so here's our blog. Let's pull up our console to just make sure everything looks good. You can see that our hovers are all working. Um, go to the all articles you know, the ang angular image loader is doing its job and lazy loading our images that's why they're showing it later so that's okay um all look good look on a specific article we can get to the there we can get back to all articles get back to the home Good. Uh, last thing to do. Sure that change our theme and preload. Everything working. So we're in a good place. Back to some. Mainly because that's just what I'm used to looking at. You guys feel strongly about the theme? Let me know, and I'll I'll pick the theme for you that you want. Um, just not a light theme. Um, it's a little bit bright for some users and. We'll pick a dark theme. I think that's it. oh no, we wanted to take a look at mobile in this all article screen. Like if we go to the home page, right, and we swap over to the mobile view, um, we can see that our articles you know change into a list like this. We get the title, the number of dates. We click, we get into here. Um, you know, we've got our all articles at the bottom. If we rotate, we can see that we get the pictures and stuff like that. And then, you know, if we go into an article, we're good. Um, but the all articles we haven't tested. So in this long view, our all articles are 
So let's rotate back. Yeah, that So our articles don't look good. Let's figure out why. So if we look, here's our article blurb. Got the header. Got our content. Content div, a path div that goes up of it. Uh, this div and other and this is our, our paragraph. So we've got text here, it's just being hidden. This is growing, that's growing. The grid. What does our grid do? So it looks like fraction. All articles doesn't. Our article blurb has a bunch of stuff on, but if we did like um, min. What is it? It's H in like the class we want. Like if we added a minimum height to the right, like a min height, we did a 10 rem of that. Then we're gonna get our article showing up as a certain size. That's that's what I'm curious about. We come back to the home screen. Back to the look. Each. So here, got the grid, but grid. And that's why things are growing. We've got a grid layout. We aren't using a grid layout for uh, other, for the articles. If you look at the articles, um, we've got the in this index, we've got the articles here. And this articles class doesn't have any special layout to it. So if we did display black. We did a flex direction. Back to where we are. But then if we did, it doesn't get us any. Not at all. It doesn't really get us anything because um, I do like flex. Do flex. 
That doesn't make sense. That goes on the edit. So we were to go to like the items in do a full. Really not giving us anything that that allows it to grow and shrink. Um, could go with a flex. Flex. Zero, but that still not giving us anything because I have a min height. Height. M. Then you know get stuff there, um, and we're adding a whole bunch of CSS classes when really we could just go um, like if we refresh this, I just go here, inspect this, we look. At... So you know maybe we'll maybe we'll mess with the article hover just because we can so what we want to do here we go so here on the article hover we could just do min height here we can do uh, min uh, x of um, we do min content and a max height of like 15 rem. Did I do min max wrong? I think it is min max without the max and SS min max. So here we go, min max, and I think maybe I have the uh, min content wrong. Maybe I can't use min max with min height. There's min content right there. Okay, yeah, I can't use it. Yes, yes, min max. And we do, there might be, um, there's another, Another function that allows clamp thinking of, but I don't know if I can use clamp either. The min max can only be used there. Min and max. Here's min height. Finds the min height as an absolute value. Percentage auto max content. Um, min content. Um. I have to do min, min and max. So go back here, and instead of using min max, which only works with CSS grids or flexes, right? Um, you can say that our min is min, and our max is 
we can say like 15 rem. Um, and doing wrong here. Oh, I need to. Um, the min is the max content, or it'll pick the minimum between this value and this value. Um, and so if we go back, lost my browser, clicking around randomly. Um, so if we go here, the min would be max content. The max would be in dash content or 15. Working, doing wrong. Does this only work? Use the available space, but not more than max. Con Bit content, that's probably what we want. Hey, Chow, wow, man. Yeah, it has been a really long time. It's good to see you. Um, it has been a very long time. I Work has been incredibly busy, so I haven't been able to do as much on social media. Usually after work, I'm just ready to be done for the day, a lot of days. Um, there's just been a lot of design and just discussions going on. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I haven't been on Twitter as much as I, I like I like to be, but I haven't seen you either, Chow. How you been? Um, and we can probably just do a fit con instead of min max and just do fit. We can say that we want our fit. We want to fit for at least. Um, say we want at least. Um, I don't know five. Doesn't that work? Twenty percent. high auto in content it content 20 em Try that in height, it comes fifteen. Still nothing. Been homesick. Oh yeah. Are, are you still over in Vietnam? Doesn't work. Doing wrong. Yeah. You've been there a long time. I can totally see why you're getting homesick. I'm not allowed to do. I'm having such a. So this is a. A grid, which is a block level element. I do. Wait. I do a fit content. Say that we want to fit the content at being red.
Let's look at the compatibility charts here, right? So we've got min height. Um, fit content is there. Fit content. Ooh. That's my problem. It's an experimental feature. Um, I would love to be able to do the fit content. Um, that's not going to work. Um, So what do we do in that case? Let's uh, let's refresh this. Um, in this case, then probably what we want to do is um, grab our blurb class here. Uh, just grab article hover class again, and here we will say that um, well, it is a display grid already. Grab the all article. Here, we want to make this a display flex. And we also want a flex direction of column. And then I think we want a flex um, basis like 15 rem. Play inline property on the pellet. Parent element prevents basis from having an effect. Try setting the display inline property on the index is inline. So the index component, if we just make this um, a display block, that should allow. Still not. You display. A little bit. Actually, made things a bit strange. But that gives our flex base. Wait, is flex basis width in um like column? Let's um turn this off. Go back here. Um what do I want? I want flex app auto. Flow column reverse. Hmm. What I want to do is if the articles are smaller, not use as much room, but um, need to do some research there. And we'll go back and we'll the thing we can do is we can just come into our code on web store. Ten more days, chow. Um are you gonna be at IO? You're gonna be at IO. Uh, I'll be there. Actually, I think I know you're going to be at I.O. because on, on a call I was on, somebody said they were going to be there with you. So it'll be good to see you in person at Google I.O. Sticky lines. Um, I'll look through this later. So in index page, what are all articles? Our all articles component 
what's the blurb on here? Um, and we will say that we're going to add the um, min height. Or is it height? Let's forget to look this up. Docs. Um, min dash h. So I was already doing. Um, and let's set our min dash h to something a bit bigger, like forty eight. We can say min dash h dash forty eight. Um, and then what we can do is we can say that at like medium, we can do min h because we're we're mobile first. So the classes we add here are the mobile classes. Um, and then what we do is we override for certain breakpoints. And that's the way Daisy is written to be mobile first. So now if we go take a look, now we can see that our articles can at least read a little bit of them. So it, small, I believe this is where we get to medium and yeah, we're gonna get our pictures to pop in. But you know, here and you can even go and say, hey, let me see what it looks like on an iPhone SE. Swap it. One interesting thing. The theme stuff is trust. Swap it back. Theme stuff is over here. Um, so we've got something broken with the themes on iPhone SE. On an iPhone, theme stuff isn't working either. this way. I wonder what I've done to make it so that the theme stuff isn't showing up here. And the other thing is the um, all articles. And this footer seems to be handling stuff differently. Um, there it is now. Why? I think this is just a, a bug in the way Chrome was rendering it. Um, because like the footer and header should have been in one place. The theme stuff should have been there. Um, if you go look at the all articles in this orientation, we look okay in this orientation. We look okay. Go back to the iPhone S. Now it's working the way it should. Swap orientation. So there's there's my phone, the Pixel Seven. It'll look okay in this orientation. Then in this orientation, you're gonna get images. So always good to check out your um, your mobile views, um, regardless of what you're designing. Even if you're only designing for desktop, um, your responsive and your container um, queries, um, you should set those up because you never know when somebody's going to drag you and go like, hey, you know what? I do stick you in this top corner, right? Um, and so, um, you never know what size of window they're going to use. Um, so, you know, designing always for desktop may not be the right choice. Um, like here, where we've got all the mobile views turned off, if we put this up in the upper right hand corner, uh, we can see that things still behave okay. They've gone from, uh, well, if we go to the welcome, actually, because of the sizing, things. It's still behaving kind of like a tablet view, and that's fine. 
in the all articles view, giving us images, that's fine. So just always good to just check out, you know, the ways that people could do stuff to your site. You know, the other thing that somebody could do is just stick me over here on the side. And now in this orientation, because I've got this popped out, I've lost my images and that's good, right? Um, we, we want to see it like this and the same with the main page. Um, and that's why, you know, responsiveness just isn't for phones. It's, it's about allowing your users to use their windows, how they want to use them um, and your site looking good. Um, just always, you know, be aware. And um, I know like this is, this is built into windows, this, this kind of stuff. Um, the Mac has, ways of doing it too. Um, I think you have to get a special program for it. If you don't, I would love to hear about it because um, I've been wanting to dock my windows on my Mac, but I haven't found an easy way to do it and I don't really want to pay for software. To do it. I'll just manually size them and hope I never move them. Um, Admit that. And, you know, it's usually just a small fix. To make sure that your site looks okay with, with mobile first type stuff. So, uh, fixed all articles. Mobile. There we go. We've now got all of our articles fixed for mobile views. The, the next thing to do, we can close all this down. Um, and this is pretty much the last thing we need to do before we um, start looking at um, CMS type stuff. But, you know, when we click on an article, what is this page support? And what kind of cool things can we do with this page um, that we can't do with other pages? So I would like to like to do um, something a bit crazy. It might be crazy, but um, let's go to Excalibur. Draw. There's our facade stuff. Let's. Get a new image. So, you know, let's pretend that this is the user's browser. What I would like to do, fill this, and across the top, um, I would like to stretch from side to side um, kind of the image for the blog. A lot of blogs use the image at the top as the title. Um, and then, you know, inside of um, inside of the, the blog, um, we would do, we'd have the title here. We would have byline here, maybe, right? The, not the byline, but the date. And then we would also, uh, we can leave that as a date. And we would also color have So then this would be the article content. And, you know, maybe at some point in time, well, we would like to add like, comments to the side or something like that, or comments below, I don't know. We'll think about comments when we get there, but for the beginning, uh, I think this is kind of the layout. But what I'm thinking is as this changes, um, we want the image to um, change at breakpoint. Maybe, I don't know, um, but, at some point, the screen will probably get wider than our image. 
Um, and then you know, as we shrink it in, it will get smaller than our images. Um, I want to use AI to generate our our header images. And I've actually been thinking about um, a stream where we would use um, Comfy UI, and I could show you guys how to use that to generate um, AI art for free. But um, what is SDXL? STXL um, sizes. So this is what. So these are the um, STXL. There are a couple of different. Um, There are a couple of different sta stable diffusion libraries out there that you can use to generate images. I'm most familiar and set up for running SDXL. There's like SD 1.0, SD 1.5, SD 2, SD 3, SDXL, which is pretty much the most common one right now. I think SD 3 will take over um, once it's more generally available and there are models trained on it. Um, but if we look, um, Looks like a 1536 40. It have a 640 pixel height by 1536 wide. Um, and that would be, um, SDXL will be able to generate images for this height. Um, most images in SDXL are or most models are trained on 1024 by 1024, um, but they're able to work with um, increments of that multiply out to be the same values. So 640 by 1536 is our potential height and width. So we will use that. Um, so um, we'll grab our text. We'll just mark this up. This will be 640-1536. And so as the, um, probably put a box. Or... Interesting. Capacity, capacity, oh well, I was, I was hoping to be able to make this transparent all the way through. Um, I'm sure there's probably a way to do it, but that'd be good. So 640 by 1536 will be the biggest view. Um, and then we'll we'll size it based on based on the the screen size. Yeah, I like that idea. That'll be nice. Um, We'll, we'll need to think about mobile versions. Um, and probably what we can do with mobile versions is um, there's a way to um, use AI to either upscale or downscale your images. Um, and so um, it might be fun to just show how to use a comfy UI workflow um, that could generate you know, header images like this um, I could even show how to put text on top of images um, and then show how to downscale images too. Um, 
and um, you know we could we can mess around with that for a bit. Just a way to explore something different. Uh, yeah, um, let's get this set up. We're we're going to use. Um, we're still going to use the the lorem ipsum picture stuff to generate this, but it will be 640 by 56. Your DevOps. I have an Azure DevOps. Be from when I used WebStorm a long time ago at an Azure DevOps shop. So if we look at our pages, we've got our home page, and then we've got our articles and our articles index, and there's our index page. Um, but we want this page now. And start working on that. Um, one thing I was just about to do is add a padding to this um, to this page. We don't want to do that. We don't want to add padding to this page. Um, and the reason we don't want to do that is I want the image to stretch border to border. And then I want a bleed is what it's called, where you've got a little bit of space from the edges. Um, and that bleed will be um, you know, what constrains our article content, and title, and all of that stuff. So um, and we can do this using grid lines. Um, which is really kind of cool. Um, so this is kind of a grid if we look at it. If I grab the line tool, we slice this up. Pick Alec. Good. So, oops. Draw a line here to here. We'll draw another line from here. Draw a line from another line from. And this, this is our grid that we will be using um, for our content. And the, the cool thing we can do um, is this, we can, we can name our grid lines, um, which gives us the ability to um, um, have content um, change based on rotation and stuff like that. But We'll design our grid and we'll name um, this grid line the, the left bleed, this will be the right bleed, um, and then obviously we'll have the we'll call the very far side the edges. And then um, so this image will go from edge one to you know left edge to right edge. Um, everything else will fit within left bleed to right bleed. Um, and there's a reason that I'm doing this. I actually think I might keep this together as one component um, within the grid um, and we'll center it. But I want this date to be right aligned. And I don't know if that's going to look good. We'll figure it out. Um, but I just want to do something a little bit crazy where this title can grow or shrink um, and then this this date will stick to the right edge of the title group. Um, and we we could do that. Being, um, uh, 
could do that using some sort of like flex layout thing or things like that. But I think if we create one element, we drop on the page, we right align this, and then we just allow this to grow to a certain size. Um, and it will be constrained within the grid. Then we can just do a place item of center on this and it will stay in the center, but it will grow and shrink and this will move. I don't know how, but we'll figure it out. Um, place to start. So let's first start by, where do I want to start? Um, well, we, we can't do anything until we've got a grid. So let's do that first. Go look here. We're going to make this article ID page have a layout of. So we, we need a script. I is yes. No, it's not type. Yes. And inside of our script, we, we want a couple of things. So um, we want to define metadata. Metadata, you know what? Let's realize there's something else that um, I need to look up. We haven't done yet, but that would be really, really helpful. Um, and I'll show you we do this, but um, we want a class on this and it's gonna be grid. That needs to be inside of a host object. There we go. So now we've got um, our, our host now has a grid class on it. Um, we're going to add some more stuff to the grid. Um, but, well, actually, let's do, go back to our browser. Inside of the CSS, favorite things to do, clear this up. And so we've got three columns. So we've got a left bleed, a right bleed, and um, content area. Um, so the left side, um, rather than being a fraction, we'll set this one down to like 5%. num lock off five percent maybe we want to go bigger than that we'll start with five and then the center part is a fraction and then the other part is uh, so this will also be So this is our bleed off the side of the page. Um, maybe 5% is too much. Do we just want like a two, say like two. All right, just a uh, small bleed. We'll probably make this ren when we do it. Um, but this is just to pull the content away from the side. So there we go. We've got that. Um, and then we've got the rows, right? Um, and then the top row is um, going to be our image row. Um, and that is going to start out at 640 pixels. So that's our top row, uh, 
Our next row is our title. We will make that. Maybe 640 is too big. Take a look. And the final bit is just the remaining. Oh, and I've got this at 200 fractions. Be at 300 pixels. We're, we're probably going to have to um, probably going to have to clean this up because right now that main image is just too big. Um, so we'll probably have to cut our images down to like 320 pixels. And then it can be like 150. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. Um, and this doesn't really matter too much because we can, can change it. What does matter are our grid areas and our grid line. I want an implicit grid uh, area box. Um, so from here to here, this is our um, image. And so we can see that the image goes from edge to edge. This is our title area. And this is our content. Right. Um, and one of the things, can we name these grid lines? So if this is left. Yep, it is allowing me to. Here. This is left. Edge here. This is our right leaf, and the only reason I know these names is because my wife is a designer. Um, so I picked up a little bit of lingo from her. Um, but we'll be using these. But this is how you name. Um, so when you set up your columns, this is how you, you name grid lines. So left edge, and then you set the, the size to the next line. That's the left bleed. And what we're naming is this line. It winds up being kind of the gap. But this gives us a nice ability to set things up. And the really cool thing about this is that we can copy this all over. And this as our grid. So uh, I'm going to copy this, set this in our style tag. Out of here, we, we're going to add a host pseudo selector because this stuff should all go on the host. Inside of here, we'll set this up. Don't need the container or the display grid. We've already got the grid on here. There we go. But we do need the image, and we're going to read these to be smaller. Image and image, title and title. Then content and And the reason we're naming the grid lines We'll see why we do this later. Um, but when we start um, shrinking and moving things around, having the named grid lines will be a big help for us. So here we want to just grab these and lowercase this, lowercase that, and lowercase that. Um, the last thing we want to do is we'll just go ahead and we'll give this a background. Green. This a background red, and we'll give this a background so we can see the layout as we as we get it in place. 
So the last thing we want to do, just within our template, we need to go grab our HTML. So we'll copy that over. We'll go ahead and paste that here. Um, we don't need the container div. We'll take that out. Because the template is, or the um, component is our container. That should be all we need. That should give us the grid that we're looking for. So now if we go back to our app and we broke some. Maybe I did. If I inspect this. Got the article. Give class grid. Better. There's the router outlet. This is our div. Hilarious. Also didn't give us our background color. Log header. That's the main container. This grid was added at div. What the? I think we want a height good percent. And in height, I add to this. Just add. There we go. Um, a min, I think we want in height. Zero. And that's kind of a CSS trick. But I don't understand. I've got this all set. Columns are good. We can tell that they're good because if we turn it off, I have three columns. Oh, because I set this up right. Image, image, image. Grid. Those are my grid areas. Um, got, I mean, it's all set up because we can see with the sizes and you can see this is 320 pixels. This is 150. My sizes are obviously bad. We'll figure that out. Let's see, I'm curious about Look at this div here. Oh, I didn't, I didn't change it. Um, I put class equals image, but I changed everything else to be lowercase. That's what my problem is. So 
we make these all lowercase. Then we should, here we go. Next. That's good, that's good. And bottom one just doesn't have a height. That's why it's not showing up. But we can see that our image will go edge to edge. Our title will fit within the bleed. And then if we give the article content, give it a min height, like 600 pixels. We can see that goes on. Bottom. Got overflow hidden on this. I don't have overflow scroll. And we can add that. So we say overflow auto. Let's do overflow X. Overflow dash X. So now um, in the, and I don't want over the Y. In the Y direction, it can, I've got to go back and change that, change that um, div here. Eight, say 1,000 pixels. And we still aren't scrolling here. Overflow Y up. So we're, we're definitely overflowing because if we look at this div, it goes well below the bottom of the articles here. Um, we've got the auto overflow here, but I think it has to do with the grid itself. Look at this grid. Where did I set the heights? This is set at one frac. It should probably be set at Definitely growing beyond the bounds of the grid. Um, min con there. Why do I have auto rows? This should be min dash con. Or should it be max? Off. Up every. On. I'm going to grid auto any. A grid 
added a whole bunch of height stuff. The one fraction shouldn't be a problem. The grid auto columns and the grid auto rows, I think I added myself. Um, and the auto flow, we don't want that. Template areas, that will fine. Got the overflow y on bid. Does it? We need the grid one. Maybe I only did it in the. Um, maybe that's my problem is that I only did it. Let's let's make the content. Um, make it min height. Do the thousand pixels, right? Because this should cause it to scroll, and we should get a scroll bar allowing us to scroll two pieces out of view. Um, but we're being constrained. Constrained. Overflow. That's probably the, the issue. Overflow hidden here. But if I take that off, so if we turn it off, yep. Um, but that also also causes my header and footer to scroll and I don't want that. So this has overflow hidden. Don't have a max height on that's the problem. If I add a max height, the percent get the the screen. It's going to allow us to scroll this, keep our header in place. That work. I need a max height on the. And do that easily. We just do uh, each step. Now when it reloads, got our screen. And the one fraction wasn't the issue. It was just that. Um, I told it, hey, um, if you overflow your container, um, then give yourself a scroll bar. But I didn't tell it how big the container should be. Um, and the container that had it said that if it overflows, just hide it. So we can, we can come to this div here. Back to it. 
make this min height like you know roll bar goes away so This image right now is four by three twenty. If I did a fifty sixty fifteen thirty six. Huge. Putting that in half is a seven eighteen by three twenty, but um ten twenty four is a nice break point for um we pop this out. At this size, that div is exactly by almost exactly, I mean off by about 11. But what is 11? It winds up being like one less than one, well, it's one less than 1% of 50. So we're we're within 99, right? We're within 1% of the target. So if we were to do probably generate, that's 1536 by 640, and then cut it down, auto edit. We, or we could downscale it ourselves. So let's shoot for 1536 by 320. Hmm. Our image div right now, we'll just give it um, Right now, we're just going to hard code it. What are we using in our model? We pick some dot for. Feel this. Paste that. Oh, and so here we're going to say that we want 1536. I think I might have the backwards. The other thing we can do is we can change this to use ng source, and then we need to import our ng width and Did it not? Here, Baker word we'll use here. We'll use uh, SDXL. Let's see what that gives us. Because we don't have any random generator right now. We'll, we'll do that in a little bit, but we need a width. 36, eight of 20, that should work. So the other thing we can do, go HSL RGB, so we 
70 degrees. Good saturation and lightness. I'm going to do like a slash point, make our background. There we go, that's our background for our image. We'll take a look and see what we did. Did nothing. Inspect. Uh, let's just see what happens if we just try to go to this URL here. It may be outside of the range that this can generate. We'll see. Oh, no, it generates it just fine. Other thing is here, the image class. That not work. Point three. with like so my image tag here if I inspect this image tag just take the Oh, you know what I didn't do? No, my ng source isn't. No, it's right. Look at our component, our article blurb component out of here. Source, optimize. Oh, I forgot to add it to the fifth. Here we just that will add it to the imports array of our host data tag. And that should there. There's our image. Our image is actually going way off the side. Uh, we can see that, like, if we close that, we can see there's our image there. And if we bring it back up, so it's it's shrinking the image. We don't want it to resize the image. Um, when it it's not at the right height, we instead want it to uh, we want it to keep the image centered, but we want it to take the edges off the side. So. Uh, Go take a look at what we did with our image in our article blurb. This image here has a width and a height. We're tying that to the image size. Are we using a script? No, we're using two for fifty. A two. Because we weren't we weren't changing the image size anymore. Started changing it and then we decided not to change. Um so now it's just that specific height and width. So what we want to do is we want to go take a look at CSS image overflow clip, and we can take a look at up here. 
this image. So overflow clip mark PN. Nope, that's font. Yeah. So the clipping example. It's that height, that border radius, that. So it is down to calling it a width and a height. So if we go here and we go with full height dash full overflow, this all needs to be inside of a class. Full, full. What does object cover do? Hey. Look at that. Oh, but it's easy. We pop that again. was not marked priority. This image should be marked priority in order to prioritize its look. Fix this priority attribute. Do that. Pretty. Hmm. thirty-six by 20. One five added to an image without needing the corresponding image styling. Fix this, adjust image styling. In most cases, adding height auto or width auto to the image. Don't want to height or width auto to the image. There is no pre-connect tag present for this image connecting to the origins that serve the priority images, ensure that the images are delivered as soon as possible. We'll worry about that later. What I don't like is that it's resizing this and not um, truncating it. So let's take a look at what object cover does. As image dash over. Object. So we are cover object fits CSS property. That's how um, the content of a replaced element such as image or video should be resized to fit its container. So here with fill, it's going to stretch fit. It's going to contain cover, cover object fit none does no scale down does not.
So contain is resizing it top to bottom, um, but it's it's maintaining the aspect ratio. We don't want that cover is basically taking it and it's so it is going. It's maintaining aspect ratio. We've got this piece and this piece, right? And this. We probably do want object dash cover. The replace content is scaled to maintain its aspect ratio, yet cover. Replace content is sized to maintain its aspect ratio while filling the element's entire content box. The object's aspect ratio does not match the aspect ratio of the box, and the object will be clipped to fill. The replace content is not recent. So, what if we take this, do that, give it the object cover. It's scaling it again, so we definitely need the, the full and the full. It's not going to scale it top to bottom, but if we look here, um, when I bring this in, never mind. Wrong. It is chopping the edges off. I thought it wasn't. But here we've got kind of this V. So it, it's almost a mirrored pattern, right, as we're looking down this towards the flag in the background, and we've got the light here. But we've got this V. Um, so I, I thought it was, I thought it was changing the image. It's not, it's leaving it the right size. It's scaling it and centering it. This is exactly what I wanted. Um, and so it's handling the image the way I would want it to. Um, this probably gives us the ability to do um, some other things that we can experiment with. Um, because it's going to clip the image with the cover, it's going to resize it to whichever dimension fits, and then it's going to clip it. Um, so I'm curious. Let's add a click handler to this. So on the image, we're just going to do uh, click, click. On my computer, <laughs> WebStorm just decided to free. Hmm. Yeah, I can see that is really weird. I don't know why it decided to freeze like that, um, but we're going to console. No, no, we're not going to console log. We're going to resize. Resize. We need to do something. So we are up here. We're going to bind. Here we can do a uh, fill. What's around so style dot dash dash um, height. We'll bind this to image height. Variable. 
go. Let's do it. So down, um, we need a resize function inside of our scripts. Define our resize. A resize. Here we go. Uh, so the other thing we need is a signal for image height. Uh, we can just say const image height equals, and here we can just say signal. Import our signal. And in the beginning, we'll just make it 100%. Here, instead of height full, um, just say height dash. Uh, I think we can just do var dash dash image. I think we can do this. I need to make sure. Oh, I just did height. I think we can bind it this way using um, using Tailwind. Um, so now we've got our image height. It starts out as 100%. Um, here, we're just going to set the image height to 50%. And actually, what we can do is uh, we can do. Uh, will it let me use generator for this? So if I do that, can I use a generator in my click event? Uh, because what I want to do is I just want to do while true and this may crash my browser we'll see um so here oh it looks like it had it what we can do is we can just say hey yield this value and then the next time just yield um so basically what we did is we we created a generator um um and our generator what it's doing is it's just um moving back and forth between 50 and 100%. There, there's probably other ways to do this, but I'm really, really curious if um, I can use a generator um, because I can use functions. I don't think I could do this um, in, in pure Angular. Um, I'm really curious if I can do it in a single file component. Yeah, it's giving me a generator here. Going to be hilarious if that it's not compiling something's broken try resetting it click So this height variable is not with is that yeah the depth height is that could come down to some issues here which height I think I need to move my parentheses or my my square brackets inside of here. I just had the key that I didn't actually have it set as a binding. I think that's probably my issue. 
Lovely maze. Inspect this image. We can see down here that the var dash dash height is at 100 on this. Not getting my binding to fire. Which is good because I'm not getting stuck into an infinite loop. However, going my resize, click. Just add some. Log. Resize. See if it's actually called. And uh, here we will. Before this, we'll console.log 50%. Here we will console log. So um, and see in our console if we've got things. So go to our console here and click this. Yeah, that binding's not. If I take the generator off and it doesn't like to yield, let's see. I, I want to make sure that I've done this properly first. I click, click the read. Um, so we can't bind to a generator there. We can do though. Next size here. We can add our generator. We can go into here and comment this. And yield. I think that now makes it a string. Yeah. Because yield is like return. Then we can yield 100%. And that should be fine. And then um, here we can say um, that const size equals size. And then actually, we don't want this inside of here. We want our generator to run forever. Const next size, size equals next size. Um, so that'll be cleaned up when the this is done. And say image uh, height dot set. Nice. That, that's a funny. I think we can just get uh, net this size dot so size is an iterator and it put a string on dot that's the return value. Be able to just call dot next. But this gives us iterator result. 
an object with two properties done and value. I should be able to just grab dot value. Doesn't like it because string or void not assignable to type string. So we can just then go here and just say, hey, give us a hundred. Now what is it? Not assignable to type string. You're right. But the double question marks. The next size always returns. It always returns. Not the logging is the problem. Any JavaScript value, and even if we're past the end, this should still return the same value. But I have to do over here. Let's just see what we get. Um, now when I click, yeah, we're getting the, now we're getting the 50 and 100. Um, and this is the power of our generators. Um, why am I getting, how many is it get? Clear this. One hundred That's weird. It looks like it's giving more than one value, but it might be just making my click more than once. So what is the type of, if I just go on new size, Here I do new size. What is the type of new size? String or void? Does void not work with the... Doesn't like that because generator that returns. Now the type of new size is any. What is next? Generator that returns.
Say if new size. That it. Because. Here we go. I don't know why it wasn't picking up the um, double question mark. Now, if we resize this, yeah, we go down to 50%. But we can see that it's not actually resizing. Instead, it's clipping the picture. So, um, and the cool thing is, is that we can see like this line right here um, still stays at about the same place. Um, you know, it, it's a little bit above the middle of the picture, and here it's still a little bit above the middle of the picture. This distance here is you know, pretty much the same distance. Boom, boom. Um, you know, this you can see. Things have gotten a little bit smaller, um, but it fits. So we're going to be able to use this with, uh, you know, with our. So as this grows, we can see that it's just giving us more of the picture to see. And as it shrinks, it's giving us less. You know, when we shrink it here, it's giving us less and it's. So um, that was a lot of fun. Um, learned some fun stuff about image reset. Um, I'm going to commit this. Um, this is going to allow us to do stuff with like um, iPhones. So we can see here that the phone stuff is working. The other thing we could do is instead of, um, we could leave this height as full. And instead, so our grid template rows here, we could go from 320. So we could go var height. It helps if you do your vars right, so var height. And then here, now, instead of doing this, um, now we just swap between 320 pixels and like 160. Here we just do 160 pixels. Here we do 300. Um, and this is the this is the cool power of of generators, right? Um, the yield, what it does is it 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 returns that value and then stops processing right here until you act, ask for a new value. Um, and it's really really powerful. Um, this is generators are things that are used um, for async await. Um, in um, in code that you know in browsers that don't support it, they actually use generators to do the async await stuff. So now, if we click, we can see that the the title itself is growing and shrinking. Um, and now our image goes edge to edge, um, and it's going to work on mobiles. And you know, if we we flip it, we you know we get the same same you know, aspect ratio and bring it down to whatever our sizes are and make this work however we want. Um, the cool thing is we don't have to even use, um, we don't have to use, what do we want to call it? Like image resizing. Um, CSS variables, right? We, we could use percentage that would allow us to have this work. 
Um, so um, that was one of the things I wanted to solve for today was, you know, how do we handle the imagery sizing, you know, for different container sizes? Um, and so we'll, we'll take a look at, um, what we'll probably do is we'll do some container queries um, and based on the size of the container, we'll probably have stepping points for the image to go up. Side to side, we'll probably just use the percentage, but top to bottom, we'll probably have stepping based on. I mean, we can do that all with CSS, which will be a lot of fun to work through. Um, and I enjoy doing CSS. Um, it allows me to think like a lot of what we do in in web frameworks is not um, CSS related unless you're really really lucky um, you know a lot of what we do is mostly JavaScript or things like that um, so getting in and getting our hands dirty and and playing around with CSS stuff um, allows um, it allows me to learn things and I hopefully hopefully you guys are learning things it um, I, I just find it fascinating how, um, how we can do stuff like that. CSS has come a long way from where it was. Um, the very first um, thing that I ever did, like with serious CSS and JavaScript variables, um, was I snuck a pool game into software that I was working on. Back then, we were working in IE6 which is probably one of the worst browsers ever released. It was like Microsoft's ultimate attempt to lock everybody into their browser. It was horrible. And um, they called it DHTML. It was dynamic HTML. Uh, so um, I've always been fascinated by what we can do with JavaScript. And um, thank you everybody for joining tonight. It was a lot of fun working through this. Um, we'll continue tomorrow, or not tomorrow, on Sunday with the title and then the article stuff. We'll get this all working for mobile, um, get things looking good, um, and then it's time to actually bring in real content. And that's when we'll probably start looking at like AI generation. We'll use AI to generate our article content. We'll use AI to generate our header images and stuff like that. And um, you know, we'll, we'll put that into a CMS because I don't want to spend a bunch of time working on content generation. I want to just show how we can use it and, and the benefits to it. Yeah, there, there's some other things we could do with like parallax scrolling and stuff like that that might be fun, but I don't know. 